It's when your training ends that the muscle growth process begins. From that moment on, everything you do will be crucial in determining whether your muscles will grow or not. I have listed seven extremely important things for you to do right after training for the best possible result. The first is to finish your workout and do some cardio. If you do an hour of cardio, if you do an hour and a half, two hours will slow you down. Now, if you go to your cardio and do about 20 to 30 minutes, firstly, some studies show, and this is widely used in other sports like running, cycling feminism. The guys do cardio, which they call active recovery, which is to stimulate the body to perfuse more blood in those muscles. You trained and facilitate their recovery. In bodybuilding, I'll be honest with you, I've never seen any athlete do it, but cardio after training makes you turn on your parasympathetic system. So your body starts to go into relaxation mode, and this will go along with the ease of recovery. It also improves insulin sensitivity, VO2, and mitochondrial function. In other words, these are all points that will help you increase muscle mass and reduce fat. The second interesting point is stretching. First, doing it at a good intensity will increase the hypertrophy stimulus because stretching causes tissue damage. If this tissue damage is at the right level, you will increase the hypertrophy stimulus. Second, when you train, you shorten the muscle you send to it. And the stretching stimulus is relaxation. That is, you shorten and then you lengthen. So what will happen to you if you shorten, shorten, and shorten? No, that doesn't happen! You start to lose range of motion, you start to shorten your movements, and range of motion is important for generating hypertrophy. Can stretching hurt you? Yes, but if you don't overdo it, a good sign is to notice that if you're hurting a lot, you're doing too much. There are people who stretch almost like Olympic gymnasts, and then it won't work. They'll get hurt. So we now move on to the third point. We're going to talk about contrast therapy. In contrast therapy, you create a contrast of stimuli in your body with cold and hot temperatures. You may have already seen an image of people diving into an ice bath on the internet. When you finish training, is your body hot or cold? How do you create a contrast in it? Going to the ice optimizes your body's recovery. By recovering faster, you can train harder and faster too, and you don't need to rest as much. The fourth point is to consume protein. You stimulate protein synthesis when you train, so what happens if you don't eat protein? Muscles are proteins, and if you synthesize protein, you build protein. For that, you need to give your body protein. Because it's not like a plant that you look at the sun and say, I'm fine. Guys, some studies show that people who added 20G of high biological value protein after training increased protein synthesis. Then the guys weren't satisfied. They gave 40G of protein, and the synthesis increased. That's why there's this whole story about taking whey protein after training, but there's another point here. Some people finish training and run out, almost desperate to take whey because they have the absorption window, and for the rest of the day, they don't eat protein. If you train and spend 8 hours after training without eating protein, you went there and trained, and the muscle wore out, right? It needs to go into recovery, doesn't it? Muscles need protein to recover, but you didn't eat protein. Your body will figure it out. It will cannibalize itself to regenerate the muscle. How long can you go without eating protein? It's difficult to say, but some research suggests it has to be a maximum of 2 hours. So you don't need to go out desperate, but try to eat something with protein after about 30 minutes. The fifth point is to do it after training. So, some people care a lot about consuming protein and don't worry about consuming carbohydrates. First, carbohydrates are essential to provide energy. Second, when you do bodybuilding, you use the energy that is inside your muscle. The energy that comes from a place called muscle glycogen. That is, carbohydrates inside the muscle. When you train, you use it. And when you eat carbohydrates afterward, you replace it. You need to eat carbohydrates after training. Can I go six hours without eating carbohydrates? There will be a lack of carbohydrates, and when you lack a lot of carbohydrates, your body may increase cortisol levels a lot, and you will become more stressed. This will cannibalize the muscle again. The sixth point is to finish the training and analyze it. You're going to go through your head. How was training today? Was this exercise good or not? Could it be improved? With this, you will map out what happened in your training, identify points that you need to improve and identify points that were good for you to repeat in your next training. I'll give you some ideas about what you can analyze during your training. Did you reach a level of muscular fatigue in all four series? It's one thing to have four series to do. Another is to do these four series with good intensity. You can make two half-hearted and two good ones, or you can make three half-hearted. And with that, your training is terrible. Another cool thing you analyzed is whether you felt a nice muscle pump or whether he had good muscle growth. Studies show that muscle pump, which is the swelling of the muscle when it is too full of blood, is a good indication of hypertrophy. You could be doing a workout that is not getting you pumped. Did you feel any articulation? 
Did you feel any discomfort in any movement or at any time? Did accessory muscles get in the way of the main workout? For example, if you're doing your chest, you may feel the shoulder more than the chest itself. Similarly, you may feel your biceps or arms more than your back if you're doing your back. You need to map all these points to know if your training is good or not. The seventh point you need to do after training is creatine. Several studies show that creatine increases strength, muscle volume, hypertrophy, and recovery. So it's a good supplement. Many people say you must take creatine after training, but it doesn't change anything. Creatine has a chronic, long-term, and cumulative effect on your body. So if you take it after training, if you take it at 6 in the afternoon, 2 in the morning, it doesn't influence anything. If you have done all seven things, you are guaranteed your result? No, because there are things you can't do before training. To find out, click on the video that appears there, where I show you the things you shouldn't do before training. So click on this video now because it will complement what you watched. Please leave your post-workout routine below in the comments. And if you have any good tips, be sure to share them below. Stay healthy! Stay happy!